Saifa Kata originated in Fuchao, China. The renowned Okinawan master, Kanyo Higaona, studied the martial arts in Fuchao from 1868 to 1881. It was at this time that he learned the kata of Go Judyu from the legendary Chinese master, Liu Liu Ko. On his return to Okinawa, Master Higaona passed on these kata to his top student, Master Chojun Miyagi. Master Miyagi, in turn, passed on the kata to his protege, Master Anich Miyagi, and he in his turn passed them on to Master Morio Higaona in their complete and original form, together with the profound martial meanings which they represent. The name Saifa means to smash and tear to pieces. From the point of view of technique, this is interpreted to mean to strike and defeat an opponent with a variety of techniques such as pulling, gripping and tearing in close combat. Now Master Higaona will give a detailed explanation of the important technical points of Saifa Kata. Striking techniques are performed with the wrist, elbow and shoulder free of tension. The arm should be loose like a whip. For example, Rurakunuchi is performed with the joints of the arm free of tension. Grip the fist lightly and at the moment of impact, grip tightly and focus all your strength at the back of the fist. Furiuchi. Bring the arms downwards in a circular motion. The joints of the arm, as before, must be free of all tension. If you try and use strength when performing this technique, it will result in a loss of power. Release all tension from your arms. At the instant the hands meet, concentrate all your energy at the point of focus. The joints of the arm are free of tension. Bring the arm over in a circle and concentrate all your energy at the bottom of the fist and tanden as you complete the strike. As in the previous techniques, the arm is free of tension until the final moment. Then focus all your power at the point of impact. All these techniques should be performed with great speed. Together with the circular swinging strikes, the other main feature of Saifa Kata is freeing techniques. In the first example, when the wrist is gripped by an opponent, movement of the wrist can be used to break free. The forearm must be kept close to the body. If the arm is held away from the body, Strength will be lost and the advantage given away. If the opponent's grip is too strong, the elbow can be used also. This movement only becomes apparent in the application of this technique. In Goju Ryu, it is important to be aware of the three body areas, Jodan, Chudan and Gedan. Jodan, the eyes look straight ahead, but awareness is focused all around. Chudan, correct posture must be maintained. The back is kept straight, the arms are free of tension. Gedan, the soles of the feet are rooted to the floor. If the feet are correctly positioned, the techniques of the kata can be properly focused. Strong legs and a good stance will result in powerful and effective techniques. This can be demonstrated with a basic punch. Power comes from the legs and the back, and then transfers to the arm. In the basic karate punch, the first two knuckles of the fist are used to strike with, as this area of the hand is related to the large muscles of the back. The smaller knuckles, however, are related to the front area of the body. Masters of former times could diagnose sickness in the front area of the body simply by looking at this portion of the hand. The senpai, senior students in Okinawa, would severely reprimand a student if he was seen punching the makiwara with the smaller knuckles of the fist, as they would say it was damaging to the heart. Using the front two knuckles to strike with allows the strength of the back and legs to be added to the power of the punch. This can be seen in Heikozuki, parallel punch. 
power for the puncture comes from the back muscles. Therefore, it is important to first achieve balance between the three areas, Jordan, Chudan and Gedan. The eyes, posture and the stance. This will result in properly focused technique. Another characteristic of cipher kata is strikes delivered to the side. It is easy to deliver power when striking forward. Strikes to the side, however, are more difficult. Yokuchi, Urakunuchi and Uruzuki are all techniques in cipher kata. In the application to the kata technique, the whole body is used. In the kata movement, however, focus only on the forearm. The body is not used. This is a form of training to develop strength in the arm itself. When this technique is applied in combat using the strength of the whole body, even more power will then be produced. Punching from a kneeling position is the same kind of training. The hips remain still and only the arms are used. This develops the arms and results in a more powerful punch. Therefore, in application, the whole body is used to increase the effectiveness of the strike. In cipher kata, you look to the side while kicking to the front. For those just beginning to learn the kata, it is acceptable sometimes to first perform this technique while looking to the front to assist balance. Once this becomes easy, then perform the kick while looking to the side. Master Chojo Miyagi would often teach techniques in a simplified way before teaching the complete and correct movement in order to help the student. The front kick is performed while looking to the side to train the balance. But more importantly, the purpose of this technique is to train the sense of hearing and to emphasize its importance in combat situations. The front kick is performed in combination with skuyuke, scoop block, which is a grasping block used at close quarters. Therefore, in this situation, the sense of hearing may be used more than that of sight to anticipate the opponent's movement. This technique is teaching the importance of the sense of hearing to listen to the opponent's breathing and movements when at close quarters. The meaning is not in the body movements alone. You must train your eyes, ears and perception. This technique is unique among the kata of Go Juryu. Originally, there were no specific terms used to describe the stances. Each person's body size and type is different, and in former times, the stances' dimensions were determined according to the individual's needs. In modern times, this stance is referred to as Hanzen Kutsudachi. Step through and punch. Transfer the weight onto the forward leg as you do so. Toroguchi, tiger mouth block and strike. The hands are one fist distance apart. Focus the rich hand strike, then maintaining the tension, execute Toroguchi. Keep this tension until completion of the kata. Moving in Nekoashidachi is difficult and requires much practice in order to move with balance and speed.
太婆太婆。太婆。
살바 Bye. Bye.
Now must he go now will demonstrate the important points to look for when instructing students in cipher kata. Snap the wrist. Focus in the wrist and elbow. The elbow comes forward and out slightly. The wrist and elbow should be free of tension. Rodakunuchi is performed with a snapping motion. The block in a circular motion. From this position, the hand describes a circular arc. Turn the bottom hand early at the beginning of the movement, not at the top. The right hand crosses the left arm, the head does not change position. Keep looking in the same direction as you move. After focusing the blocks, execute Hizageri. Punches the foot lands, straighten the left leg to add power to the strike. The fist finish slightly higher than the shoulders. The fist should be shoulder width apart. From this position, turn and block at the same time. Swing the arm. The arm should be free of all tension. Focus power at the instant the movement is completed. Imagine gripping the hair of an opponent. Pull down in a powerful movement. Focus strength in the palms. Keep the thumb tight and the palms stretched open. The front foot should be straight and in line with the back heel. The knee is turned in slightly. Now Master Higa Ona will demonstrate the basic applications of cipher kata. These basic techniques are the original techniques taught by Master Chojo Miyagi and they have been passed on to Master Higa Ona by Master Anichi Miyagi, Master Higa Ona's lifelong teacher. As the opponent grips the wrist, move at a 45 degree angle forward and to the side, away from the opponent's right hand. Turn the wrist to break free. If the grip is too strong, the elbow can be used. 
Alternatively, release the hold by gripping the opponent's finger or by striking to a vital area. Log the punch, pull the opponent forward onto the strike. Now using the same technique to defend against a punch. As the opponent punches, use the elbow to block. Block the right hand and strike as before. Strike to the nose, forehead, eyes or chin. If the opponent is tall, strike to the solar plexus. Now Master Higo Ono will demonstrate this technique with full speed and power. In this technique, block with the outside edge of the forearm. The real meaning of skuyuke is to catch the punching arm, but for basic technique, the outside edge of the forearm may be used to block. Grip the wrist of the punching arm, block the front kick and strike knee kick. If the opponent pulls back, counter with front kick to the groin. Hei Kozuki application. Block with Kakeuke. Take one step forward, attack under the clavicle, then push away, striking to the Ganka vital points as you do so. Yedan Furiyuki, downward swinging strike. Strike to the ears as the opponent moves in. If the head is twisted, strike the face and neck. Alternatively, strike with the elbow to the spine. Grip the ears or the chin and the hair twist and then take down. Tetsuyuki, bottom fist strike. Move to the side and strike. If the punch is too strong or fast, block as you move, then strike. The open hand can be used to strike also. Grip the hair, pull the head down as you strike to the eyes. 
If your opponent is much taller than the structure of the solar plexus, the groin or the chin. Hi Tochi, rich hand strike. Move to the side, block and grip the arm, then follow with a strike to the side or the neck. Toruguchi, tiger mouth block and strike. After striking Haitouchi, follow with a neck break as shown. Lock Hiki Uke, follow with a strike to the groin and chin. Now Master Higa Ono will demonstrate a basic Toruguchi application. <laughs> Lock Hiki Uke. Follow with a strike to the groin and chin. The fingers strike to the eyes. For training purposes, however, push the chest and lower abdomen. Now Master Higa Ona will demonstrate variations on the basic applications of Cypher Kata. The techniques you will now see have been developed by Master Higa Ona through his own research and training after years of studying the traditional techniques passed on to Master Higa Ona by his teacher Master Anichi Miyagi. In the basic application, the wrist is used to break free. If the grip is too strong, stamp down on your opponent's toes. This will loosen his grip, then you can break free. Catch the opponent's thumb before he can grip the wrist. Pull him forward and strike to the head or side. As the opponent reaches for your lapel, block the hand upward and strike his side. Pull the opponent forward and strike to the spine. In the kata, the elbow moves on a lateral plane. However, in the practical application, the movement can be interpreted as a descending strike also. The opponent grips the left hand with his right. Use the elbow to strike his inner elbow or solar plexus. Pull and strike simultaneously. 
動けしてるんですけどもこのように応用分解が入るでじゃもう一つこれはあの応用分解しますでこあ,あえて右入れたらまあこれは基本的な分解In the basic application, the wrist and elbow are used to break free from the wrist hole. Keep the forearm close to the body. This creates distance between the opponent's gripping arm and his body. Keep the forearm close to your body and break the grip. Lock and strike to the eyes. If the opponent is tall, strike to the groin or solar plexus. Step on the opponent's foot so that he cannot move backwards and escape. Skuyuke, Gedambarai, Hizagedi. Cover with the left hand and catch the elbow. In real combat, the block would first strike the elbow, pull the opponent forward and strike with the knee, then take down. In this technique, block as before, use the knee to strike to the face or solar plexus. Use body evasion to avoid the kick while covering at the same time. Counter to the vital areas as shown. The blocking hand grips the Achilles tendon. Once the foot has been gripped, follow with a strike to the vital areas shown. Use the free hand to cover the face. This is the same technique but blocking on the outside. Hei Kozuki, parallel punch. Block the attack as demonstrated. Follow with an attack to the eyes or other vital areas. Grip the hair and finish with knee kick. Now the same technique is used to defend against a bear hug attack. Strike the arms down, attack as shown, then push away. In kata, the closed fist is used to strike. However, in real combat, a variety of techniques can be applied according to the size and body type of the attacker. In self-defense situations, always aim for vital areas. Kedan Furiuchi. If the opponent attacks the chest area, sweep the arms away and continue in a circular motion to strike the ears. Take down and finish as Master Higaona demonstrates. If the opponent attacks the neck, block up as shown and throw as demonstrated. Tetsuyuchi. If the opponent is tall, strike to other vital areas as Master Higaona demonstrates. A variety of different strikes may be used according to the target area aimed for. The 
次にもうこれからこの引き手の手つきから今度は裏付きよ裏付きと使いにわざい裏付きショートパンチ右は打ってあれ来るかもしれない As the opponent begins to punch with the left hand, pull down and strike to the face. If he throws a kick, pull down to the floor in a throwing motion. This is the meaning of this movement. Shudansky. If the opponent tries to hug the body, attack the eyes with the fingers, then push away. トルグチブロックを使って、グリップを使って、ブロックを使って、This block can also be applied against kick attacks. Block as shown and finish with a neck break counter. The back of the neck is a very vulnerable area.
法This concludes Gojuryu Kata Saifa. Tape number 16, the next in this series, performed for you by Master Higo Ona, is Gojuryu Kata Seungchin. Thank you for watching. <laughs>